Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. And when you come here, you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty. Today, I am going to show you how to make this waffle stitch washcloth. This is a really simple pattern and I've added in my written pattern, I've added some tips. So if you want to expand it and make a bigger thing like a blanket or a sweater or something, I've got some tips for that as well. So if you're interested in making this really cute waffle stitch washcloth, keep watching. Okay. So for today's project, we're gonna need a couple of things. You're going to need a ruler or a measuring tape. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, and you're going to need a yarn needle. Of course, you're going to need some yarn. I am using this Bernat Handicrafter cotton, but uh, cotton is great if you're doing dishcloths, so that's what I would recommend. And we are going to begin this pattern with a slip stitch. Let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see how we're gonna get started. First things first, a slip knot around your hook. Then we are going to chain 26. One, two, 24, 25, 26, 26. Now, double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So one, two, three. Gonna double crochet in there. And now double crochet all the way across. At the end of the row, chain two and turn. Okay, there I am at the last stitch of the row. I'm gonna chain two and turn my work around. And there we go. And now what we're going to do is begin our waffle stitch. This is a two row repeat. For the first row, we're gonna do a front post double crochet into that first post here. And then we're gonna do two regular double crochets in the next two stitches. So one and two. And then in that next stitch, we're gonna do a front post double crochet again. And then in the next two stitches, regular double crochets. We're going to repeat this all the way across. So two regular double crochets, one front post double crochet, and then two regular double crochets, and one front post double crochet. The stitches you'll need for this uh, washcloth only include chain stitches, front post double crochet and double crochet. So if you have trouble with any of those stitches or if any of them are new to you, I will link tutorials to each of those stitches in the description below so that you can master those before coming back and doing this awesome waffle stitch. The texture is so fun and it's so worth learning the front post double crochet and double crochet if you haven't done that yet. So I'm just gonna repeat that all the way across putting my front post double crochet and then two regular double crochets until I get to the end of the row. And here at the end of the row, or nearing the end of the row, I have one more front post double crochet to do right here. Front post double crochet. And then we're going to put a double crochet into the space of the chain three here. So we're not gonna put our last double crochet in the top of the stitch. We're gonna put it in that chain space, that chain three space. Uh, and that is going to just keep our edge nice and straight and keep everything moving the way we want it. Then chain two and turn the work. Here is when the second row of this two row repeat uh, begins. So we are going to start with a regular double crochet. I know we ended there with a front post, but we're not trying to bring this back or we're not trying to adjust this post for this row. So we're just gonna start with a double crochet in that first stitch that was previously a front post. Now these two double crochets from the previous row, they were just regular double crochets. In this row, those are going to be front post double crochets. So those first, those two double crochets are now two front post double crochets. And now that front post from the previous row, that's going to be a regular double crochet. So it's a reverse of the pattern from the beginning. So 
now it's going to be two front post double crochets and then a regular crochet. Two front post double crochets and then a regular crochet. At the end of this row, you should finish with a regular double crochet and you'll do a double crochet after that into the chain two space from the previous row. So I'm gonna zoom through and I'll meet you when we get to the end of this row where we are just repeating two front post double crochets, one regular double crochet, two front post double crochets, one regular double crochet. All right, I'm at my last two front post double crochets. There we go. And now we're going to finish with a double crochet where that front post double crochet from the last row is. And then to finish off the row, we're going to put a double crochet into that chain two space from the previous row. Oops. And then chain two, one and two, and then turn the work. And you can already start to see, we've got this ridge in the middle here and these ridges showing up now in that sort of waffle stitch texture. It'll really be more visible after this next row though. So let's get this next row started. At this point, we are repeating that first um, row with the front post double crochet. So for that first stitch there, we're gonna do a front post double crochet. And then in the next two stitches, we're gonna do a regular double crochet. And then in the next stitch, a front post double crochet, and the next two regular double crochet. We're gonna repeat that all the way across. We should finish with a front post double crochet, followed by a double crochet in the chain two space from the previous row. So I will meet you when we get to the end and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here we are at the end of the row. I'm gonna do one more front post double crochet and then one final double crochet in that chain two space from the previous row. And chain two. Now you can see that waffle pattern a lot better, I think. So chain two and turn it around. From here, it's actually going to be a repeat of the exact same thing for a total of 16 rows. So right now we are on row number one, to, we're on row number five right now. So from row number five all the way up to row number 16, we're gonna just keep doing the exact same thing. When we're working on the front side, which is the side that has the waffle pattern, we're gonna be doing one front post followed by two regular double crochets, and then another front post, two more regular double crochets. When we're working on the back side, which is not waffle stitched, we're going to be doing a regular double crochet and then two front post double crochets and then another regular double crochet and then two front post double crochets. So that is the repeat. It's just a two row repeat. It's so awesome because you get this awesome texture with a really clear square grid sort of pattern without having to do too many things. A front post double crochet and a double crochet, that's awesome. Just a repeat of those two. And here is the tip. If you want to make this bigger, chain your initial chain in multiples of six. And then at the end of your initial chain, add two more stitches uh, just uh, to make up your first double crochet when you turn it around and work into the third stitch. Mm -hmm. So multiples of six, do whatever you gotta do, make it as big as you want, but start with multiples of six and then add two at the end of your final chain in order to uh, create that first double crochet. So for the rest of the main dishcloth portion, I am going to just zoom through it because it's just a repeat of the exact same things. If you have questions about those parts, please leave them in the comments below. And if I can't answer them, I'm sure someone in our awesome community will be able to, but I will try and answer any questions you may have if any step here wasn't very clear. But I'm gonna rush through these, um, these last last rows, the rest of my rows, uh, and I will meet you when it's time to weave in our ends and add the tag. Okay, I'm finishing my last stitch on row number 16, my last double crochet. 
Okay, so that's it for the stitches, but now we're going to add a little tag so that these can be hung up. So let's do a chain of 15. One, two, 14, 15. And now we're gonna take that working uh, the hook and we're gonna stick it back into the last stitch of the row and just pull a slip stitch through everything there. And then we'll pull up one more loop and tie that really down nice and tight. Cut the yarn, loop that loose end through and then just pull it nice and tight. And now time to weave in these ends. Ta-da! Isn't that cute? So this took maybe 20 minutes uh, to make one of them. So you can knock a few of these out in an hour and they are a great gift for anybody. They're also great to just have because that texture makes for a great scrubby texture if you use it on dishes, if you use it on your body as a like a body washcloth, it's got a nice texture so it'll make nice suds in there. Isn't that so cute? I love this Bernat Handicrafter cotton because I feel like it makes it look like toast like waffly toast type thing. So I made a little set of four. Look how thick that is with all that texture, so squishy. And the back, you can see the back, it also has a texture, but it's not quite as pronounced. The front posts on the back and the regular double crochets, they don't make the same impact as the front does. I feel like that front makes such a cool, oh, I just really love the look. But you let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments down below if this is something that you think is gonna be useful for you, something that you think you're gonna try. As you can see with my pattern here, it's got a nice edge to it. You've got a, a straight edge and then a front post on both sides, a straight edge and then a front post. And then the bottom is just double crochet looking. So it's nice and uh, finished as is. If you want, you could do a crab stitch around the outside or a single crochet around the outside or a slip stitch around the outside. It's totally up to you. But for me, I think that this is just perfect as is. The final measurement for this, if you start with the chain of 26 like I did, it should be about five and a half to six inches uh, by six inches. Yeah, six inches by six inches, good, that's awesome. So a six inch by six, six inch cloth, I think that's awesome. You can definitely make them smaller. I made a cute little scrubby pad by using a four millimeter hook. You can see it's a lot tighter. And I made it a smaller size just to test uh, the stitch itself. So give it a shot. I think it's actually a really good uh, project for practicing new stitches and you get a cool thing out of it. You get a nice washcloth. So let me know what you think in the comments down below and let me know what you want to see next because I am filming tons of stuff and if you give me suggestions I will happily film some of those things. And if you want that written pattern, uh, the bullet journal spread for this, definitely check the links in the description for my Patreon. Uh, when you join you'll have access to all of these. And thank you so much to my patrons for this month. Thank you so much. Much. I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. So thank you. And definitely uh, if you are a patron, check it out today because you're going to have access to this already. So that's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye!